There he is. There he is, the one and only Jordan Bushel. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing really well. Just playing some tunes before we get started. Very nice. Are things that where are you right now? Uh at home in Toronto. You're in Toronto? Yes. Very nice. How are things? Um we're on lockdown. We're getting there. They uh, they told everyone that uh, you know I, th I think it was leading into the holidays we we didn't do so hot so lockdown Ugh. and uh, it was I don't know if you know but we have uh, you know I've talked about it before but Canada's got our uh, Thanksgiving in October right so everyone sort of got together or a lot of people got together despite. The government saying, no, 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 please be careful. Right. And, uh, so we did a, a second wave and there was, uh, there was tons of news articles a couple of weeks ago saying like, um, what, you know, is the U.S. going to learn from Canada's Thanksgiving mishap? Um, yeah. And likely some stayed home, but likely others. I mean, Thanksgiving is a much bigger holiday in the States than, than in Canada. You know, sure. Sure, sure, sure. games around and everything like that. So. Uh, yeah, I expect that will be a be a small mishap as well. Well, we wish you nothing but the best, and hopefully we get through this soon. And hopefully, have you stateside, we can do this in person. Yeah. Um, but for the time being, we're going to have to settle for the virtual. So um, I think... Doo -doo -doo. I say we just get... We start going and uh people trickle in they trickle in um but just some quick notes before we start just i've started uh all of these this will be recorded so if you want to rewatch it or share it with anyone uh, i will share the link over the next few days um, okay. it is webinar style so you can only see mine and jordan's camera um and then i'll be following any of the questions if anyone has any questions uh, feel free to put them in the chat. There's a q and A. I'll follow that as well. Um, ask away. We've got an hour, a little under an hour of Jordan's time. Uh, we're going to go through uh, some seasonal cocktails, which I'm excited about because I actually made some um, beforehand. So yeah. I'm not the mixologist here, so <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm pumped about that. They're very, um, uh, they're, they're very fun. They're easy to make, um, and yet they're kind of uh, they're they're interesting in a lot of ways. They're very refreshing as well. well Except the coffee cocktail that's just a heartwarming. That's not refreshing at all. Well, you know, <laughs> that's fine. You got to throw that in there. Um, well, my name is Eduardo Dorado. For those who have joined in for the first time, like I said, I'm the uh, division program manager here for Moat Hennessy in Virginia. Very excited to have everybody here. Tonight, we are lucky enough to have Jordan Bushel, our global brand ambassador and master mixologist for Hennessy. What a title! What a <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a mouthful. It is, but it is very very worth it um, to to note. And we've got a lot of people here from various parts of Virginia joining us. Very we've got nice. Norfolk, Mosley, Alexandria, Richmond, Virginia Beach. Oh, Colorado! There we go. That's I don't think that's Virginia. Um, and then obviously our friend here from Canada. So Jordan, please take it away. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, exciting times. Uh, th that's the one thing that I think Zoom or I'll take away from COVID. Uh, I was going to say that Zoom has brought us. We can have, you know, Virginia, Washington, Colorado, Canada, all in the same room together. Uh, last week, I think I trained uh, South Africa, Hong Kong, and oh. Paris. Uh, all within the same 12 hour period. So that, that could never happen if, uh, if I weren't, uh, you know, in one place on Zoom or anything like that. Sure, that's awesome. Um, so we'll start with a little, uh, I guess we'll, let's start with a cocktail. Then we can start talking about the kind of history of cocktails and, and where some of them uh, kind of fall. And then, we'll, uh, and then we'll go on to some other cocktails as we go and we can get some questions rolling in because it's always good. I, I find 
I think I'm more interesting when you have a cocktail. Uh, so that should hold true for all of us. Um, That's fair. We're going to start with um, the one of the simple ones, and it's it's called the lumberjack. But um, at, at one point, um, uh, for a very short period of time, for an event, I called it uh, Blame Canada because uh, for any of the South Park fans out there, um, it was based on that song, and it's it's done that way because I am uh, I'm a Canadian, but I was though I am the global ambassador now. I was. Uh, the national U.S. ambassador for for nine years, and uh, a lot of people knew that about me that I was Canadian. So when I used every time I used maple syrup in a drink, they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's because you're Canadian." Um, but I use maple syrup in a drink because it's amazing with any sort of age spirit. So when we look at something like Hennessy VS, Hennessy VS is darker than a lot of other uh, cognacs or a lot of other VSs because it, we use a lot of new oak. Uh, at Hennessy, and New Oak is a is a law for bourbon, but it's mm -hmm. not a law in cognac. So for us, it's a stylistic choice, and we enjoy what oak brings to the table. Specifically, we use uh, what's known as a wide grain oak for those nerds out there. Uh, it's called Limousin Forest. The Limousin Forest provides a lot of complex flavors, a lot of tannins, a lot of beautiful stuff that help with the aging of the cognac. Um, we have very bold, expressive eau de vie. Uh, the eau de vie being the distillate of white wine uh, that becomes cognac. So we take that eau de vie from that white wine and we put it up against that new oak and we get something really beautiful out of that combination where VS, you look at its relationship to the barrel and it's that of a battle where they're both kind of fighting for supremacy, this really strong fruit notes that we're getting from the eau de vie, the grape distillate, and then that really strong note of, of new oak and they come together to create something beautiful and I think it works really well with the spiciness of this cocktail. So for this cocktail, you're gonna need um, maple syrup. I like pure maple syrup. So, you know, uh, Vermont makes some good maple syrup. Canada makes a lot of good maple syrup. I think generally that, that Northeast sector of North America is uh, makes a lot of the world's maple syrup. But mm -hmm. uh, what maple syrup is gonna do to this drink is it's gonna bring out that new oak note, bring out those spices that we get from oak, which are, you know, vanilla that turns into toffee, that's, you know, uh, the, uh, the spices like uh, cinnamon, clove, allspice, the baking spices of this kind of year or this mm -hmm. time of year. Um, it's going to bring all those out because maple syrup, of course, comes from a tree as well. Uh, maple and, and oak are both very hard woods. They both react a lot of the same way. So they're going to have similar flavor profiles in that way. Um, so you're going to need your maple syrup. You're going to need uh, your Hennessy VS, Angostura bitters or another aromatic bitters, bitters being um, something that is infused with spices and herbs. In this case, Angostura has a lot of cinnamon, clove, allspice, those kind of big notes. It's gonna pair perfectly with the maple syrup. Uh, bitters can also help to, to balance any sweet notes there. If something's overly sweet, you can add either sour or bitter to the table. Uh, and then you're gonna need uh, some, some uh, lemon juice to balance out the sweet as well. So uh, for tools, you're gonna need a shaker tin. Uh, or something to shake in. I've seen, I've even, you know, in a pinch shaken in kind of one of those uh, healthy mugs to make like protein shakes or, oh, sure. or, or like a, a thermal coffee mug. They can all work. Something where you're not going to have kind of the spray coming at you and it's going to hold in some pressure there uh, or hold in the liquid as you shake it vigorously would be good. Uh, a measuring device. I've got a jigger where one side is an ounce, another side is two ounces with lines for various other measures in between. But you could use a measuring cup or um, tablespoon measures or things like that. And uh, then finally, um, some sort of strainer and some sort of glass to put it in. For the lumberjack, we're gonna put it in a rocks glass. And we can always start with getting your rocks glass and putting a few cubes of ice in it. Now we want your bottom of your shaker. We're gonna put the cheapest ingredient in first because if you screw up and you've only got lemon juice in there and some maple syrup, you're fine. If you've already added cognac to it, that's an expensive screw up and maybe you're drinking a not so great cocktail uh, along the way. So you can screw up early, dump out and try again and, and not have any tears. There We're you go. A half ounce of lemon juice. And, and hopefully if you're uh, joining it at home, you can also uh, follow along. Like I said, I did this earlier, so I'm just gonna, gonna watch. 
We can then add, uh, oh, drop that, uh, a half ounce of maple syrup. Now maple syrup is sweeter than simple syrup. Um, so when using it in a cocktail, generally you wanna use a little bit less of it than you would simple syrup. It is a great additive to things like an old fashioned where um, a little bit goes a long way. So half the amount of simple syrup or sugar that an old fashioned would have, and you have a maple old fashioned and it's gonna bring out more of those oak notes. So it's gonna be great in, in a lot of different applications. But we have equal amounts of sour and maple syrup here because we're gonna have a lot of bitters and the bitters will also help to balance the sweetness. So we're purposely overloading on sweet so that the bitters can bring it back around. We're gonna add five dashes of Angostura bitters. Now, make sure you have the little dasher cap on top that's got the little pinhole in it. And when you do, you can be aggressive with it and go from straight up to down four or five times. One, two, three, four, five. A lot of gonna... times bars, or if you're baking with it, some recipes call for Angostura bitters, people will take the dasher cap off so they can measure it out with teaspoon or tablespoon measures, forget it somewhere, and then you go to make a cocktail with it and you go dash and a whole bottle of Angostura goes into your glass. That's why we add the cognac last. There so, you go. A quick, quick question, Jordan. If you're gonna have any bitters at home for your home bar, is the Angostura bitters, is that what you're kind of more common used Bitters, or are there some other ones? Yeah, Angostura bitters is the most common. Uh, the second would be orange bitters, um, something like a like a Regan's orange bitters. Sure. Or Angostura also makes another orange bitters that will have an orange cap instead of yellow. And the third most common would be uh, Peychaud bitters, um, sometimes known as Creole bitters. Now, uh, realistically, if you only had Angostura, you could make uh, a Manhattan, an old fashioned, this lumberjack, the spiced orange smash we're gonna do later. Uh, you can add it to eggnogs, you can add it to, to a lot of different things, even baking, so much so that Angostura bitters is sold in most grocery stores. Yep. Uh, and yet it is 45% alcohol and yet sold in grocery stores because if you drank this, you'd never touch it again. I don't care how much you wanted alcohol. Uh, you would be regular for the rest of your life. Yeah. The history of bitters is that these were the little like snake oil salesmen selling these to, you know, cure everything from male baldness to, to cancer uh, back in the day off the back of like a, a horse cart. So um, these were added to cocktails because the, this, the old kind of saying of a spoonful of honey helps the medicine go down. Well, this is quite bitter. It adds some flavor, but in small dashes. So mm -hmm. honey or alcohol, yeah, alcohol does help medicine go down. So um, you can even take this and add it to kind of like a hot toddy or something if you're not feeling, feeling sure. under the weather. And a lot of people, a lot of bars, uh, like pubs will have this around. And the only application they had for it before they realized it went in cocktails was a few dashes of this in some ginger ale or soda water for mm -hmm. upset stomachs. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it works really well. So we've got... Um, half ounce of maple syrup, half ounce of lemon juice, five dashes of Angostura bitters, and now we're gonna add an ounce and a half of Hennessy VS. For this, um, we have a completed cocktail. So we're gonna add some ice and then shake. Now, if you're shaking in kind of any kind of uh, made up vessel like your, your thermal coffee mug or, you know, protein shake shaker. That's great. If you have a cocktail shaker, we need the flat side of the shaker to come together near us. And then the break in, the, the side that's separated from the shaker to be away from us. Non-dominant hand on the bottom, dominant hand on top, hit it. Moment of truth, the bottom should stay stuck. This is called creating a seal. We're gonna flip this upside down because we need the large part uh, on the bottom. Because when we shake, if this seal breaks, we want liquid coming towards us, not towards whoever we're making it for. Fair Bartenders, enough. that's very important for them. But even if you're making it in your home, you don't want to be making a cocktail for your significant other and spray them with that same cocktail. This will be very important when we get to the uh, coffee cocktail, because the coffee cocktail uses a whole egg and pressure will build up in the shaker. 
no pressure should build up in the first two cocktails. But okay. we take our non-dominant hand, rest the shaker in it, fingers under the bottom to hold it, dominant hand on top, thumb on top, rest of the hand down the side like a football, and then we want all the forces on the out, and then you reset, and you do this as fast as possible, like you're mad at the drink you're about to create. But be smiling the whole time, because a smile, uh, you're creating a beautiful drink for, for somebody you love, even if that person is yourself. The general rule is if it's too cold to hold, uncomfortable to hold, it's cold enough. You can see frost forming on the shaker uh, if you've shaken hard enough. If you find somebody shaking kind of like limp-wristed, that is not the purpose of a shake. A shake's purpose is to uh, not only chill, but to aerate um, and dilute. So a dilution of about 30% is what you can expect from a proper shake. Mm -hmm. And when you see this, you know, there was no foaming agent or anything in here, and yet there's a nice, level of foam on top of my drink because of that shake. And that foam is, uh, is going to add to the mouthfeel of this drink. So this yep. drink will be great by itself because this is essentially a sour. Some sweet, some sour, some spirit added together. We added some bitters to it to take it in a new flavor direction. Uh, but on top of this, to accentuate those flavors that we were playing with, we're going to use some cinnamon. We can grate this over the top. It also looks really nice and put it down the side. Now, nope. you could serve this on any type of ice. I've got particularly large ice cubes. It works really well on crushed ice. There's a lot of big flavor here, so it's gonna work really well in whatever kind of application of ice you have. So that is the Lumberjack. Any questions that came through on that or any questions you have? Yeah, um, could we use VSOP with this cocktail or is it more of a VS? Uh, cocktail. What yeah, are your thoughts? You definitely use VSOP. What's important to remember is VS and VSOP are one is not just older than the other. So VSOP is older than VS. However, they're different. VS, as we've talked about, goes in new oak. So it's got a lot of that big cinnamon spice, big flavor to it. If you drink it neat, it's got a little bite up front from that spice, much like younger bourbon. Whereas VSOP is more like a scotch in my mind where it takes a little bit longer to reach its, uh, its maturity, goes up to 15 years, which is double the age of, of BS, but it also doesn't go in new oak. So it's a little bit more of a harmonious application of the oak. You're not mm -hmm. gonna get a big bite from that spice. And therefore, when the spice is a little bit less present, you're gonna get more of this red fruit, more of this candied fruit coming out. Whereas VS is a little bit more dried fruit. For VS, I would think like it's dried apricot, baked apple, with a lot of those baking spices up front. For VSOP, I think more like candied cherries and, uh, and brulee peaches going into like that subtle spice that leaves it on the back end. So um, both work really great. I think for this application, the VS spice works really well, but if you used VSOP, you'd get some of that spice. The Angostura is still gonna bring that spice. This is mm -hmm. gonna bring some red fruit to it. So if you use uh, VSOP, you might want to, you know, you could garnish it with like an apple slice or something like that. And it oh. would start bringing out those flavors. 100%. Cheers. Cheers. We got another question that came in. What about XO? Yeah, I mean, XO, if you wanted to mix with XO, be my guest. It's, uh, XO is, is any good spirit, you know, especially with a cocktail that contains so few ingredients, you're basing a lot of the quality on those ingredients. So, you know, natural, pure maple syrup, a really good cognac like Hennessy. Uh, if you use XO, your XO goes in new oak, similar to VS. So you're just gonna amp up those spice notes. It's going to be bigger and fuller. So if you did this with XO, I might even bring it down a level uh, and use half the amount of lemon juice and half the amount of maple syrup and let XO lead the way with just a little bit of the other accoutrements to it, and you'd get a you'd beautiful cocktail in that way. Sure. Um, any food pairings you'd uh, suggest with this drink? With this drink, it, for me, it's, it's apple pie or any sort of like apple crumble 
or something like that. It works super well. You know, Hennessy's got that that cinnamon, you know, mm -hmm. from the barrel. And when you pair with, you know, I, I don't think there's a more iconic pairing than apples and cinnamon. So I, I love that pairing. And I think this would go super well with it, especially like a warm apple crumble uh, with some like vanilla ice cream or warm apple pie with that vanilla ice cream. This is going to take it in, in that refreshing direction where the pie is like, uh, going to be a little bit sweeter, a little bit more kind of uh, like the, the fats from the, the ice cream and, and the sugars in the, um, in the pie and the butter and the crust. This alcohol and the citrus is going to cut through that and you're going to get a pairing of flavors, but a refreshing uh, addition to that. Sure. So this is a little bit of a more modern cocktail, but we talked about it being a sour and the sour is is kind of the basis of, of a lot of the world's cocktails. If you walk into any cocktail bar, I would hazard that 50% of the menu is going to be a sour base. When we look at things like the, the rum daiquiri, the uh, margarita, the cognac sidecar, the, uh, even the, the mojito, they all have a sour base that was built upon. And so we look back to the world's first cocktail book in 1862, uh, written by a man named Jerry, uh, dubbed the Professor Thomas, and he listed you know, a big consortium, a big collection of cocktails. And the very first sour listed is a brandy sour. You go further in this book and you get the mint julep. Mint julep mm -hmm. is a bourbon cocktail today. And yet back then it was known as a cognac cocktail. It was created first in 1803 as a cognac cocktail put into this book in 1862. Uh, sure. And you go further in this book, cognac and brandy were so prevalent they were out there, they were everywhere before, you know, bourbon and rye reached their quality level that they were used more. Um, and what happened was in the late 1800s, we had this little bug that was native to, to the shores in, in North America, it, known as phylloxera. It fed on the grape stalks or the roots of the grapevines. Um, and it, it, when it reached its maturity, it, it climbed to the surface, spread of wings and flew off to kind of propagate itself elsewhere and spread itself elsewhere, uh, where it would then feed on the fruit itself and the leaves. They didn't know it was hitching a ride when the Europeans brought grapevines from North America, grape varietals that they didn't have back in Europe mm -hmm. over there to see what they could do in, the, in, in what was at the time and, and still in a lot of people's minds are the hallowed fields, like the best areas to go grapes in the world. They brought these varietals back from North America to see what they could do, what new wines they'd be able to make from them. Didn't realize this bug hitched a ride. This bug laid waste to Europe. So it arrived sometime in the 1860s, but by 1870, that's when we started to see it in cognac. 20 years go by and we mm -hmm. lost five sixths of our fields. So nearly 80% of our fields or over 80% of our fields wiped out by this bug. And so cognac got very expensive got very hard to get and it started disappearing from you know the speed rails at bars disappearing from cocktail lists because it needed to be replaced by things you could get so sure you got replaced by bourbon um you know any sort of whiskey would replace the sour or gin would replace the sour and you have a gin sour um or a rum sour if you were in a warmer climate so all these things happen and cognac went by the wayside and then of course as we get as we cure ourselves of that plague and we get back going, you have the First World War. Then you have a little bit of heyday in the Roaring Twenties, but in the States, it's prohibition. Then you have um, the start of the Second World War, well, the Great Depression, and then the start of the Second World War. And yeah. after the Second World War, people just wanted to celebrate what was supposed to be the war to end all wars. So they didn't care to wait for age spirits. So any age whiskey or age cognac that was, you know, being used for the war effort uh, or distilleries were being used for the war effort had to wait to re repropagate their stock and vodka took over. And it was just, you know, you like orange juice, you put vodka in it. Congratulations. You have alcoholic orange juice. Um, of course, good vodkas can make great drinks as well. But the point of this is cognac went away and cognac then started to be thought of as oh, this is just, you know, either uh, a drink not to be mixed, it's meant to be neat, it's meant to be all this, and yet at one time in history, it dominated cocktail lists. It was a third of the cocktails in the world, third of the cocktails in the original cocktail books. And we can see why, because we've got a few very different cocktails uh, today. So with that, I think we can make uh, the spiced orange smash. Now, 
This is one of my favorites because it combines a few other elements off kind of that sour base that we just we just built upon. So you're gonna need your shaker, you're gonna need your, um, your uh, sorry, your strainer. And um, in the bottom of the shaker, with your measuring cup, you're going to need uh, a verna, um, a verna and or another digestif, some kind of spicy, big flavor. We're only using a quarter ounce of this, so you can use a lot of things. If you don't have this, you can add a few more dashes of bitters and you'll probably be all right. You need some orange marmalade. If you don't have orange marmalade, uh, you can use any sort of berry-based jam uh, or fruit-based jam is gonna work really well as well. Um, although I do think orange to cognac is like bacon to a chef. It makes everything better. So uh, orange marmalade does work really well. Um, for this one, I'm also gonna use Hennessy VS because we're gonna play with the spice as well. But if you want to use VSOP, again, it's just gonna heighten that candied fruit note that we're getting from the orange marmalade. So it's gonna be really great for the the person out there that asked about the XO, of course you can use XO in this. You're gonna have a really bold flavored cocktail there, uh, but it's gonna play with the candied orange flavors in um, in the orange marmalade as well. Jordan, for a, a good substitute for a Verna, I know you said a, another DJC, but do you have any ones that you would suggest specifically? Someone asked, what do you use Amaro? Yeah, like any Amaro or, I mean, a Verna is just Sicilian Amaro. So um, Amaro Montenegro, uh, a, a Moro Nino, you could use, uh, hell, you could use a little bit of Jagermeister, you could use anything that's got that herbal, bitter, but still sweet kind of hit to it, uh, and, and they'll all kind of work out well in, in different ways, shapes, or forms. Uh, if you wanted, you could even use a little bit of Campari, uh, like a small splash of Campari instead of this. Yeah. That bitterness will, will work, because Averna, though it, it's kind of got like a Coca-Cola kind of sweetness condensed sweetness to it it's also got the bitterness from the herbs and things like that that are mm -hmm. bringing to the table which is what we're looking for in this we're looking for this to kind of take the angostura bitters and amp up that herbal side even more because we've amped up the fruit side on the other side with the with the um, marmalade so this is going to be like the last drink spicy level but like amped up with that fruit so we're looking at that for cognac like the fruit and the barrel mm -hmm. we're battling each other and we're just complementing both sides of that battle with marmalade on one and with the bitters and Averna or any other digestif on the other. So, um, and that's the beauty about cocktails. You can take and mix and match when you understand what the purpose of each of the elements are. So if you're taking out a simple syrup, but you're not adding a maple syrup or a honey or something like that, well then you're gonna need to add, you're gonna need to cut your sour or bitter down, or you're gonna need to add more liqueurs or something like that to balance it out. It's all about balance. We don't want, a steak that's too salty. We don't want, uh, you know, chicken that's got too much pepper on it. We want something that's balanced between those flavors. Sure. The same is true of cocktails. So with this, we're going to start with the marmalade. And what you want is kind of like, um, like a, a heaping tablespoon. So if you're if you're using an uh, an ounce measure, it's probably uh, just over a half an ounce of marmalade, maybe three quarters of an ounce. I just use a bar spoon or you can use a teaspoon and get kind of a heaping scoop of orange marmalade. So that's it in the bottom of my shaker. Now to this, uh, we are going to add uh, a little bit of simple syrup. So we want uh, a half ounce of simple syrup. Now what, is it hard to make simple syrup at home? Um, as the, in, I get this question a lot and yet it's, Simple syrup to, to me is, is like the rest of the world thought of bottled water. When bottled water came out, everybody was like, well, I can get this from my tap. Why would I pay for it? And now it's one of the largest industries in the world. Simple it's syrup not. is the same. It's water and sugar in equal parts combined over heat. So sure. if you could just take any cup and just fill it to the top with sugar, pour it in a pot, then same cup, filled it to the same point with water, put it in that pot, combine it to heat until, you know, you stir it until there's no, you can't see any sugar crystals, and then cool it down and, and refrigerate it. It'll be good for, for a month or more. Um, yeah. And it's, it's really simple, it's really great. I always have like a large one lying around because I am constantly coming up with new drinks and, and elements like that. Uh, but you could make it in the moment. You could even cheat and use, um, I've seen people use cold water and sugar and put it in a blender and just blend on high and it'll combine it. 
or you could use a kettle, heat the water separately, pour it mm. in sugar, and, and, and kind of if you're making small portions, mm -hmm. works really well. But I know a lot of liquor stores uh, sell it as well as grocery stores are now selling it. Um, so we've got the simple syrup. Uh, that was a half ounce of simple syrup. We've got the heaping spoon of marmalade in there. Now we're going to add a half ounce of the lemon juice. You could also use lime juice, although I tend to think lime juice works really well with white spirits, like mm. Blanco tequilas, gins, vodkas. Lemon juice works really well to build the body in, in brown spirits. So your bourbons, your, your aged rums, your aged tequilas, your cognacs, things like that. Um, to this, take your Averna and or any other digestif. We're gonna just use a quarter of an ounce. And then we're going to add uh, two dashes to four dashes of Angostura bitters. So if you like things a little bit sweeter, stick to the two dashes. If you like things a little bit, uh, if you like the bitterness or the spiciness of that first drink, maybe add four dashes of Angostura bitters. I added four. And then to this, I'm going to go with an ounce and a half of Hennessy VS. So that's everything we need. We're gonna take a rocks glass, fill it with ice, and then fill our shaker with ice as well. You know what I love about all these recipes that you send over? They're simple. They're not complicated, and all the materials that you need, you can get at your local store. Maybe you have to like look a little bit further for a Vern or something like that, but I mean, even the, the bitters you can get at the market. So really, it's just, it does, it's not complicated, and you get some great cocktails out of it. Yeah, um, and, and that's kind of the point. Cocktails are, have gotten this kind of mystical place where people are like afraid to play with it, but it, it's, it's kind of like cooking. Once you make a dish once, it's, it's, so much, it, it's so much easier to understand everything else about it. And if you don't have the Averna, because as you said, that might be the difficult thing to find, um, add some more bitters. Add a couple more dashes of bitters, maybe use the four dashes of bitters instead of the two, and uh, you can leave the Averna out. The rest of this will be balanced. You could also cut back on the simple syrup a little bit um, and, and you'd be good. Or add a splash more lemon juice. So we've got that. I'm gonna put it in our shaker. Again, small side is gonna be towards us, large side away. And this, you wanna shake this hard. I know we shook the first one hard, but make sure you shake this one hard because we're trying to break up that marmalade or that jam. Uh, and mm -hmm. we really want all the flavors from that. I was asking if we can use the orange bitters instead of Angostura in the smash. Okay. Yep. Now some, some bitters, some orange bitters are fruitier than others. They don't necessarily, they're called bitters. They might not necessarily be that bitter. And so you want to hmm. uh, be careful with the orange bitters you use. Try some on the back of your hand. And if it's not, if it tastes really good, like you want to drink the bottle, it's probably not bitter enough. So be careful how much you add, maybe only add a dash or two, uh, because we need the bitters to balance here. And if, you're, if it's not that bitter, and you also don't have the Averna, then maybe up the amount of lemon juice, just give another splash of lemon juice or lime juice, and it will, it will balance out the sweetness in this. So okay. for this, we're then gonna strain this as well. Um, not everybody has a fine mesh strainer, uh, but a Hawthorne strainer with really, uh, Hawthorne strainer is the one with the springs, if the springs are really close together, that's a good thing in this one. Because we've got the pulp from the marmalade, some people don't, I'm one that doesn't like a lot of pulp in my drink. Some people mm -hmm. do. I'm the no pulp in my orange juice guy. Um, but if you don't like pulp, then you wanna try to strain out. A fine mesh strainer uh, can work really well for that. Uh, okay. But Hawthorne strainer, if it has a tight enough weave on the springs, can work well as well. Now, that's beautiful in and of itself, but to this, we're gonna add an orange twist. So we take uh, an orange and you can use either a vegetable peeler uh, or a paring knife. If you're using a paring knife, I've been doing this, I've been making cocktails for 20 years, so very comfortable with this knife pointed in my direction peeling. Um, 
If you're not, maybe put the orange down and peel off the side of it. But um, you want kind of a thick, kind of thumb, thumb-sized piece. And with this, um, the pith is going to be towards us, the rest yeah. towards the drink. I'm going to clean the edges of mine. So this is what it looks like naturally. Um, I'm going to shave those edges off so they're nice straight lines because you should, you know, that's what a bar might do. Mm -hmm. uh, looks nicer on the drink. We consume drinks with our eyes first. So it should look <laughs> as good as it tastes. And it should, if you put all that effort into it already, why not take that one extra step? Nice clean edges, kind of looks like a horizontal flag. We're gonna take it uh, between our thumb and pointer finger uh, over the drink about an inch and a half, two inches up. We're going to press our thumb and pointer finger together with the outside skin facing the drink, and we can kind of rake it over the top like we're uh, like a small crop dusting plane going over the drink and spraying the oils out over the drink. There should be the oils. If you can see the shininess on my twist, the oils should be on there. They went on the drink. Then we take it and wipe it around the rim of the glass. Give this a twist. And you can either put it on the edge of your drink or drop it right down the side of the drink. If it's on the edge, it looks really nice for photos, but it will very quickly fall into the drink or off of the glass uh, because it's, uh, it's not stable there. But right. there you go, the Spice Orange Smash. Cheers. Cheers. So as we're enjoying this real quick, we, get, we have the question that um, only took about 38 minutes to get asked which is about a, uh, a certain bottle of Hennessy White in the background. Oh, and <laughs> this little guy. You, you know people are going to ask about that. Um, so here's the interesting thing. Uh, so the question was, what's Hennessy White? Well, two, it's actually a two-part. It's, uh, is there a cocktail that can be made with Hennessy White? And um, it's so hard to find in the States. They can only find it in the Caribbean. Do you want to dive yeah. into this one? So, Hennessy White, we hear a lot about Hennessy White in, um, well, in Canada as well and in the U.S. because we're so close to the Caribbean. You know, there's a lot of uh, immigration from the Caribbean. A lot of people have family there. Um, or a lot of people just travel there on vacation. So <clears throat> Pure White is only available in the Caribbean because it was developed for light flavors, um, it's so hot in the Caribbean, they often don't drink Hennessy neat. They're always drinking it either on ice or mixed. So white was created for its easy mixability. Because, it's doesn't, because it doesn't need to be drank, or because it's often not drank neat in the Caribbean, if they're drinking it neat, they're doing a shot mm -hmm. um, for the most part. And so it was created to play with all those light tropical flavors you think uh, mangoes and pineapples and, and guava and, and all of that. And so it's, it doesn't need to have the big spice that VS has. So it doesn't go in the barrel as long. It only goes in for about three years. Therefore, it's actually much lighter in color. Mm -hmm. But that is the same premise beside, behind Hennessy Black. Hennessy Black was created for North America, uh, for Canada and the US, because we like the light flavors of Hennessy White. However, it gets a little bit cooler, especially up in Canada at certain times of year, and we want to drink things neat. So they needed to create something a little bit smoother than white, because being only three years old, it has a, a youthful bite up front. Mm -hmm. Black was created using much older barrels, so barrels that were formerly VSOP and XO, so there's not a lot of spice left for the barrels to give to the spirit, um, and yet it went there for the same amount of time as VS, so for up to eight years. And at that eight year mark, you get this smooth, beautiful spirit, and yet it still has all the light notes of a younger spirit. So mm -hmm. light fruit, the light floral notes, vanilla more than, uh, more than caramel, uh, like bright crisp apple, as opposed to that baked apple we get in VS. So Hennessy white and black are very similar. They're just mm -hmm. designed for two different markets, and if, you look back here more, you'd see other things like 
fin de cognac that is designed for the Euro European market, um, for things like VSOP uh, fin de champagne that's designed only for Japan. So all around the world, there's a number of different Hennessy's for uh, very specific market tastes and or traditional ways of drinking cognac. Um, sure. We just happen to know white and, and covet it because it's so close to us and so many of us have traveled down there. Right, and if you ever get a chance to travel down there. Get some, get some. Grab your yourself a bottle. <laughs> Interestingly, you can also get it in uh, France. So uh, right. Cognac, the Hennessy store in Cognac sells every single Hennessy from all over the world. So if you're ever in Cognac, France, which is just down the Southwest near Bordeaux, um, it's, there's a great store there. Beautiful. And this cocktail is beautiful. Okay, so that is the Spice Orange Smash. We've got the Lumberjack. And um, last but not least, we've got the coffee cocktail. And so the coffee cocktail and coffee and Hennessy go super well together. And yet this cocktail is kind of a, a surprise. I, I've ordered it personally at bars, top rated cocktail bars. I'll not mention their name because they said, no, sir, we don't make uh, coffee cocktails here. Thinking I wanted like a, like a, an, an Irish coffee or something, like a, a warm coffee with Baileys in it or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a, it's a great way to start a cold day. But the coffee cocktail is called a coffee cocktail because it tastes like coffee and yet contains no coffee whatsoever. It's kind of a magic trick. Uh, yeah. a, and it is kind of, it, it's from the Nog family of drinks or a flip in that it contains a whole egg. So this time of year, we think about eggnog. Eggnogs have, have egg in it. It gives it that slight yellow color. Uh, it gives it a, a viscosity and, and some beautiful flavor. But uh, this is a classic kind of drink ingredient because it adds so much complexity to a drink. Um, and I mean, eggnog, you, you have raw eggs a, as well. So mm -hmm. uh, trust me, I have made thousands of egg white cocktails and hundreds of cocktails with eggs in them, with the whole egg in them. They work very well and uh, no one's ever, ever gotten sick off it or anything like that. I'm just gonna give my shaker tin a rinse and yeah. then we'll make this coffee cocktail. What you'll need for this, is some port wine, um, ruby port preferably, but tawny will work. You don't have that. You could use um, you could use Madeira, which might be more rare than port. Uh, you could use a sweet dessert wine. Uh, you could use some some red wine, and we'll just add a little bit more simple syrup or something like mm. that to it. Um, you'll need an egg. You'll need some Hennessy. For this, I'm using Hennessy BSOP because I like how the red fruits work with the port uh, and the spice works with with everything else in this. Um, and then some nutmeg to grate over the top or some cinnamon to grate over the top or something spicy of this kind of year that's going to go well with like an eggnog type drink. It's going to go really well. You could even take some coffee grounds and grind them or, and, and sprinkle them over the top. So I'm just going to rinse this. Perfect. Yeah, please do. Let's see. Yeah, so someone asked about the master blenders and we can talk about that a little bit later. We yeah. do have the master blender coming, master blender number four coming out next year, which will have actually uh, some in Virginia. So keep an eye out on that. Um, but yeah, if you want to, this is a brilliant, brilliant, uh, brilliant spirit. I'm yeah. super excited for that to come out. Yeah, me too. Um, so for this cocktail, we're going to add a quarter ounce of simple syrup. So if you're not, if you don't have any port and you're using red wine maybe go to a half an ounce of, of mm -hmm. simple syrup or maybe even a little bit more. Um, no. So I said half an ounce and then I poured half an ounce. So quarter of an ounce of simple syrup. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna do uh, an ounce of ruby port. So one part port. And then you're going to do, uh, however much port you added, you're going to add double the amount of, of cognac. So I've got two parts cognac. i uh, got a quick question here. Can you sub agave nectar for uh, simple syrup? Yes, you can. Agave nectar will be, uh, if it's agave syrup, it would be equal to simple syrup. If it's agave nectar, 
then it hasn't been watered down and it would be you treat it almost like maple syrup. You're going to want maybe uh, if I did a quarter of an ounce, you're going to want take take 30% uh, off of that. So I did like a sixth of an ounce, a fifth of an ounce, something like that. Sure. You could probably, because of the amount of stuff we've got in this drink, you could probably still do a quarter of an ounce and, and you'd be all right. Now, that's everything to this drink except the egg. So for the egg, um, you can also, if you are not as comfortable cracking an egg, you can uh, crack this in a side bowl or um, in the other part of your, your shaker tin and then pour it in here. Or if you're comfortable, put it on that. Uh, pro tip, don't crack using the edge of this, uh, the edge of the shaker, because you'll probably get some shell in there. You'll, you can strain the shell out later, so don't worry too much about that. Uh, but I smash it on the table a little bit, and then um, and then go from there. Well, I know some people. Some people here are afraid of using a uh, raw egg because they they don't want to get sick. But there's a special way of of even before you put the ice in, you're gonna um, yeah, we, uh, we you're gonna shake it. A lot of it. Um, through, through shaking it up. It's shaken with a lot of alcohol. So alcohol is just naturally killing things. Um, bars all over the world every day are making cocktails with raw egg in them and nothing happens. For the vegans out there, you could also use something called aquafaba. And this is um, the kind of liquid that is in a can of chickpeas. You can also make this using dried chickpeas on your stove. Uh, you can look it up. It's a, it's a health trend over the last number of years. It's got similar proteins to what egg would have, and it creates the foaming uh, effect that we have in the end cocktail. It also creates a lot of the same mouthfeel. And uh, for cocktails like this, it has a, a, like a, a nutty earthiness to it that uh, will match the cocktail great as well. So you can, you can use that and you can sub in aquafaba. I'm doing it this way because this is a classic cocktail. This cocktail dates back to the reprint of Jerry Thomas's first book from 1862 was reprinted in 1887. New cocktails were added. It was first printed then, um, and then later printed in, in How to Mix Drinks. The name itself is, is really not entirely accurate, as we said, because we've got no coffee in this. It's port, cognac, um, mm. and, and some simple syrup. We're going to shake this up. And port and cognac have a, a long history of being uh, partners in crime within a lot of different cocktails. Those two just put together make a great cocktail. So we are going to shake this first with no ice because we really want to shake up the egg, break up those proteins. And what's going to happen is the strain of protein on a molecular level is going to get broken up. It's agitated now. It's going to grab all the flavors around it, the sour, the sweet, the alcohol. And it's going to then when we stop shaking it up, it's going to bring them all together and harmonize them into a drink together. It's why eggnog is so beautiful. Uh, it's why, you know, it's got that thickness to it. It's got a lot of things going on to it. Same thing would happen to kind of like meringue. You're whipping it up and then it creates all that air and that body to it that then gets hardened up later. So shake with no ice. Um, you look like a fool because there's no ice going back and forth, but you still want to shake it hard and put a lot of pressure on this because this is going to build up pressure as the protein gets air in it. And smile. Now to that, be careful. This will almost pop on its own, so you don't really need to hit it hard. Break it up. That should be all, you should see all the foam, everything like a finely finished cocktail. Now we want to add our ice and shake it again so that, uh, that we chill it down as if we've not shaken it already. I got a new puppy and he's mesmerized by this shake right now. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, and we're gonna strain this into kind of a coupe or martini, uh, or you could put this into a little rocks glass uh, with, with no ice. All of them will work really well. It comes out looking like a latte, like that red port wine and the, mm. uh, the brown kind of like, Ruby colors within VSOP kind of bring it out and you get a little bit of a red tinge to it, but ultimately it looks like a latte. And then to this, we're gonna take some nutmeg 
and just grate it nicely over the top. You could also, as I said before, get some cinnamon, uh, get some um, coffee grounds, anything that's gonna work really well with that uh, is gonna work, but you do want something over the top because it just, that aromatic is beautiful. Otherwise that egg white cocktail, like the egg keeps all the flavors in. So you want that something over the top to really entice. And then sip, enjoy. Salud. This is one of my favorite um, cocktails for this time of year to kind of, uh, it's just, even though it's a chill drink, it's, it's, there's some, there's warmth to it. The nutmeg makes such a difference too. Just, it, it really, it, it changes it up because I tried it without, um, and then just that addition to it really changes the flavor. It's great. Completely. Cheers. Um, yeah. And, uh, so that's a classic. That's two modern kind of takes. We, uh, I know you had a question about master blender. Mm -hmm. Master blender is, um, oh. Okay. Which one do you have? Blender is right now. Anyway, Master Blender is um, is a is a limited edition. I, I would say yearly, but it's not yearly. It's kind of at the mercy of our Master Blender. So Hennessy is on our eighth generation Master Blender, Renault Fidu de Giron, and he creates uh, or his his uncle, the seventh generation Master Blender, Jan, started this uh, a number of years ago. Uh, I believe. 2015 or 16, I think 2016, he created a Master Blender selection number one. And it was an inspiration of the EDV that were sitting in the cellar at Hennessy, which is the largest cellar uh, collection or collection of EDV rare and, and aged spirit in the world, uh, well, within the cognac world. Mm -hmm. And he found some particular barrels that were unique and different that didn't quite, there were outliers to what we expect from uh, Vias Athena, can you take that away from him? Um, he found a squeaky toy. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, so they, they, they're an outlier to what we would expect for VS, for VSOP, um, and though they might work in little dips and dabs in these uh, blends that are kind of day in and day out, mm -hmm. it was something that he wanted to celebrate. He wanted to celebrate those barrels, so he created a unique blend. And then it has lived on in Master Blender number two um, by Jan. And Master Blender selection number two was Jan Fidu's very last blend. Master Blender selection number three was Renault Fidu de Jean's very first blend. Mm -hmm. And now, and I love Master Blender number three, and now we get to see Master Blender number four. So this is, you know, Renault kind of coming into the role. He's already created a number of blends. He's created Master Blender. Uh, number three is his first blend. This is him getting to kind of stretch his wings and experiment. And the tease for it so far is that it's inspired by his uh, love of the outdoors and love of nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it not be a more appropriate time as I think so many of us during this kind of crazy year that 2020 has been have rediscovered different aspects of ourselves that we've enjoyed. We probably, if you're anything like me, spent more time in the outdoors, more time kind of by ourselves, enjoying different things. And uh, this is kind of the inspiration for Master Blender number four. And I think uh, it's, it's going to be uh, a wonderful addition to the family. And I would collect it, uh, uh, I would get more than one bottle. So you can yeah. drink one and then uh, enjoy the next because rare bottles of cognac are normally hundreds if not thousands of dollars. And I know Master Blenders, historically, Master Blender selection bottles have come in, um, you know, under a under hundred. Really? I mean, we're, we're, it's sorry. A few of them were slightly over, but mm -hmm. normally something that like Master Blender number two, for instance, I think was a little over a hundred, but it was up to twenty years old. And when you get something up to twenty years old, you're flirting with XO territory, and XOs sure. are, you know, uh, start at one hundred and forty and go up from there. No, definitely. Very excited to have it, and, and uh, I'm assuming you haven't had a chance to try it yet. No, normally but. that's one of the best times of year for me. Where right. I get to go over to France and sit with the Master Blender and try um, Master Blender selection. Obviously, COVID shut that down. Just another problem that I've had. But another that's, reason. That's 
that's that's small compared to uh, compared to a lot of the things out there uh, in this year for everyone. So uh, I am excited to try it with with everybody. Um, I will hopefully be getting it at the same time as everybody else, and uh, we can get on one of these and try it all together. I, I hope so. Um, I do have a couple of more questions. Um, one way back was, what's a good uh, Hennessy nightcap? Um, that was the well, question. I like the bigger, fuller flavors for the nightcap. So something like this coffee cocktail I'll have earlier in the night. So for mm -hmm. nightcap, I love either VSOP neat, uh, XO uh, neat, or on a rock, um, depending on the time of year. If it's warm, um, probably want it on a large cube or a couple cubes. If it's cool, uh, then just, just neat. Um, and or getting a cocktail like a Sazerac or a Bucare, something big, old, even a Hennessy Old Fashioned. You can go to Hennessy.com and find a lot of different recipes, a lot of classic recipes. We're lucky in Cognac that um, Cognac was in a lot of classics and classics, you know, have stood the test of time. Sure. So they work really well. I think anywhere you're going to see bourbon or, or scotch or another whiskey, you can take Cognac and put it in and you get something familiar but different. A cocktail you know is the, the original. Uh, but something, a little nice twist to it that brings uh, some interest back maybe to to that cocktail for you. No, definitely. And I know we're running close to that seven o'clock time, but is there any chance we're, we're getting requests for a bonus cocktail if you have the time for it? Something simple. Um, something simple. If you want something simple cocktail with Hennessy that you can make, especially for this time of year, I would take an ounce and a half of Hennessy Choose your poison, the VS or the VSOP, and take some pressed apple juice, regular apple juice. If you want to get apple cider, you can do that as well. Use about three and a half ounces of, of apple juice or apple drink of your choice. Um, add one or two dashes of Angostura bitters. And even if you had regular, you know, name the brand apple juice, something you had as a kid, you add Hennessy to that, you add some bitters to that, and it's going to taste like a rich apple cider. So it's something beautiful. You can have it warm, or you can have it on ice, and it works equally as well. Oh, that's perfect. It's a little combo. You can either have it cold or hot. I like it. Yeah, it's brilliant for this time of year. Well, Jordan, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thanks for joining us from Canada, and I hope you and, and, and everyone are well, and uh, we'll hope yeah. to see you again soon. Um, we do have one final request to see the puppy. This is Brewie. from various people and also from me. Personally. So I, I named him Bruy, and Bruy is the first distillate of cognac. Bruy. Oh, perfect. I knew you would. Oh. oh, he's getting big. Oh my God, he's getting big. He is I, 22 pounds as of yesterday. Uh, I got him and he was 11 pounds. Yeah, I remember seeing pictures on online and he was tiny. He's getting Hi. very, he's not afraid of the camera. I just, sometimes he's like, again. <laughs> he's so used to it now. Yeah. He's I'm a natural. Because he wears a tuxedo at all times of day. Oh, what a guy. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, again, thank Jordan. Thank you so much. Thanks to Virginia ABC, everybody who joined us tonight. I uh, really appreciate it. This will be the last one for the year, and hopefully we can do this again uh, soon next year, and hopefully again, like I said, in person. But cheers. Awesome. Now, whatever your, whatever your holiday plans, whatever they entail, I uh, hope you're all safe and uh, you have a little bit of fun, and maybe, uh, maybe a cocktail or two will help. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jordan. Cheers. Night. Ooh. Okay. That was not okay.